Back in the 80s and 90s, the game developer Sunsoft put out a variety of memorable games on NES, ranging from novel licensed games like Batman and Fester's Quest to unique originals like Blaster Master. Not all of their games made it to America back in the day though, such as the recent Switch re-release Trip World. One of those games finally made it to America on Virtual Console more than a decade ago, the fascinating proto-Metroidvania Euphoria the Saga. Originally launching on Famicom in 1991, followed by a European release, Euphoria was ahead of its time with its non-linear style, but was often too obtuse for its own good. That's what makes the quasi-remake sequel Euphoria the Saga 2 so welcome. It takes the intriguing framework of the original, modernizes it, and packages it all together with a gorgeous craft-like presentation. You start off playing as Hebe, a weird-looking creature who awakens from his bed, located right next to his toilet, as you do, sets off an adventure as aliens have disrupted his world and brainwashed his friends. The general flow of this 2D platformer reminded me of the Monster Boy games, as you travel to different areas, slowly amassing a gaggle of other playable characters that can bring you to other areas. Soon after adventuring to the Euphoria Fields, Hebe teams up with Ochan, who can swim on top of water, Suke Zeman, who has a floaty jump, and Jennifer, who can swim underwater. More abilities and unlocks in addition to the characters open up the full world, made up of a variety of different areas with pleasant visuals, usually ending in a simplistic boss fight that tasks you with tossing projectiles and timing butt stomps. The hook is that every level you enter changes slightly when you enter it. As far as I can tell, it's just a few different layouts or pieces that are stitched together, but this feature makes it so replaying the stages isn't a chore, because you tackle different challenges and can find different collectibles. You will find a sizable amount of battery collectibles to progress the story, as abilities and progress are gated by collecting specific amounts. What you need to do and where you could go to do it is far more clear than it was in the original, showing that Sunsoft has learned how to be less obtuse over the past 30 years. It also helps that the platforming and light combat just feels nice on the entire journey. It's a joy to toy around in this world, especially alongside a delightfully quirky story with cute writing. Euphoria The Saga 2 stays a gentle, enjoyable romp through and through, complete with music and stunning visuals. The art style is in line with Nintendo and Goodfeel's yarn, wool, and crafted outputs starring Kirby and Yoshi, though not quite to the high standard of Nintendo's look. Much like the original, the animation for each of the four playable characters is endearing. Ochan still crawls by laying down on his back and shimmying around. The personality and style is off the charts. It's amazing that Sunsoft revisited Euphoria after multiple decades, especially because Euphoria The Saga 2 feels like a full realization of the endearing game. It won't take you more than a few hours to save the day, but it stays fresh throughout that playtime, whether you're a newcomer to the games or a well-worn Metroidvania veteran. I hope this isn't the last time we see this whole gang together. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.